Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to our psycholinguistics class. Today we will discuss the next chapter is about language disorder or aphasia. The first aphasia is procaphasia. It is usually caused by the injury, stroke, or maybe car accidents. The problem here is someone who suffer procaphasia, they still comprehend the information but unable to produce the language completely usually in speaking and writing, because proca is a place where the person used to produce the language. For example, uh, the persons who suffer this, they tend to not use the inflections correctly. Like in a sentence, Mary wants candy. Actually, it should be Mary wants candy. And also, they tend to shorten the utterance of sentence and omit the use of auxiliary like Joe coming. Sometimes someone who suffer procaphasia, they lose syntactic knowledge because there was an experiment when the scientist gave a sentence to the patients, the apple that the boy is eating is red. The person still understand that it's about a boy who is eating an apple because they understand the core words in the sentence. That is boy, apple, and eat. But when the other sentence is uh, presented to the patients, the girl that the boy is looking at is tall. The patients get confusions because they are hardly to recognize who is doing what. The next aphasia is vernic aphasia. As you know that vernic is a place inside the brain that is used to comprehend information or input. So someone who suffer this, they tend to produce nonsense speech or double talks. Like before I was in the one here, I was over in the one there or in the other one. So the persons here uh, get wrong input. So they think that this sentence is correct, but actually it's not correct. And the next one, someone who suffer vernic aphasia, they tend to make a substitution of word because their input is not comprehensive. Like the word che, they are hardly to recognize whether this is ch or us so maybe they remember or produce the word share rather than chair because they have a close or similar sounds on the other hand someone who have difficulty in comprehensive input is uh, they are hardly to remember chair because they just remember that chair is related or make an association with table so when they would like to produce the word chair they will say table on the other hand, chair is also related in meaning with throne. So maybe they will say throne in their language production rather than chair because their input is not comprehensive. The next uh, fascia is dyslexia. Dyslexia is a problem which is found in someone because they are hardly to write and read. The divisions of dyslexia are two. The first is agraphia, is someone who has an inability in writing, and also alexia is difficulty in reading. They uh, have uh, broken visual perceptions. For example, in the word dear, they are hardly to recognize which one is coming earlier, whether this is letter R or letter D. So when they would like to write, they get difficulties to decide whether to write R earlier or D earlier. They also have difficulties in recognizing close or similar shape of letter like B and D, B and Q, N and U, M and W. Someone who has pure agraphia or some uh, pure problem for writing, so they can say utterance but unable to write it. For example, someone listens, how are you? They understand how are you is about asking conditions, but they have problem to write how are you. They cannot do that. Because of many interesting facts happens in brain, so the scientists and doctor do what is called as brain investigations. That's why there are two methods in brain investigations. The first is traditional method, and the second is high technology method. In traditional method, there are three. The first is post-mortem examinations. This is about examining a brain of a dead body. So doctor and scientists uh, make operations on the brain directly and observe if there is a problem displayed 
in their lobe or hemisphere for those who in life has language disorder. And the next one is brain operations. So scientists and doctors, uh, what is that, make an operations on the brain directly by opening the thorax or skeleton and then find out if there is injury part. And then if it is needed, they will do what is called as lobectomy or hemispherectomy. Hemispherectomy is about lifting or removing one hemisphere because there is problem there. And the third one is electrical stimulations. This is by giving stimulations or giving like um, a cable on the brain directly, make a direct contact with the brain and the doctor uh, give a stimulations through song or asking questions or any other stimulations and the brain will give uh, contact to the uh, computer which is connected by the wire on the brain and the next method is high-tech method therefore the first is CT or CAT computerized axial tomography usually the doctor use x-ray or maybe in your life you usually uh, listen about CT scan and the next one, PET or positron emission tomography. The doctor and scientist uses nuclear medicine imaging uh, using nuclear power to check um, the metabolism inside the body. And the next one, MRI. MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging. So it likes when um, you remember about submarine in navy so they will use radio and magnetic waves to check how deep the deep sea so they will find out the resonance then the resonance is used to make an image of the surface of the brain and the next one is erps or even related potentials it's used to check the brain's responses towards sensory cognitive and motor event so that's all our discussions about um, language disorder and also some methods in brain investigations. Keep learning and see you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.